putting on 480p. So. What, what happened that one night with that guy and girl? There was Zeus. Hopefully it's not going to drop me off at the hotel. That's all. Nothing too crazy. They weren't that weird. They were just, you know, starstruck a little bit, I think. So, not really a big deal. But like I was saying to that guy's comment, he said, how do, you, how do I think I've changed since the mansion days? That's really a perception thing. You know, that's for you guys to decide. That's, that's not for me to be able to tell you. I mean... How do you think I've changed during the mansion days? You know, because a perception thing is, is how other people will see me. It's not how I see myself. Because how I see myself isn't really much different. It's just the actions that I'm doing is different. But the perception that I think of myself hasn't changed. CX in the CX is that you've been greatly humbled since. Well, that's nice. That's nice of you to say, Marcus. Thank you. I've uh, that you try to try and fix the media. I tried. I have no idea how to fix it. I don't know. I think it's just the app that's gone. Honestly. Uh, I 
mean, Blade's got, Blade's probably got many more years to go. I mean, Blade's, what, 30-something right now? He's probably got another 20 years before his diabetes really sets in. So, you know, Blade's fine. At least for now. I mean, I think. That's what happens when you help ungrateful people. I wouldn't say the word is ungrateful, I would just say disloyal. I think that's a better word. You know, the streamers, they like to chase money, and the viewers, they chase the content. And you want to find a balance in between the two of those things. Because if you go too far left or too far right for either of those things, it's going to end really badly. I went to the doctor not too long ago on stream. How, what did the doctor say? Yeah, Kyle, it is ridiculously hard. I'm noticing more desktop streamers converting to IRL. I mean, not really too many. I haven't seen too many desktop streamers converting to doing IRL stuff. Maybe here and there, but not mainly. Most streamers do not want to do IRL because it is not as lucrative as doing desktop streams. It is far more lucrative to watch YouTube videos than to do IRL. And a lot easier. We missed your stream on YouTube? Yeah, well, here I am. I'm gonna be alternating between the two. We see somebody actually just said, if you think you can choose your viewers in IRL, you've lost your mind. The viewers who watch you are very different and unique than viewers who think it's okay with chat moderation, like Twitch viewers and such. You know, it's really so sad to hear you'd rather desert all the community that made you to a new platform that won't allow you to be the real you. My response to that is no streamer can choose. It is true. No streamer can really choose the viewers that they can have in their stream, but it is definitely good to moderate your chat and cultivate something good, okay? You do not want a community full of people that only want the worst for you. Um, you <laughs> you have to cultivate a, your, your community correctly, otherwise it's going to bite you in the ass. And the only way for it not to bite you in the ass is to work extremely hard and to go through extreme amounts of stress that you don't really get appreciation for. Why the fuck would any streamer want to do that? I mean, I know I didn't want to do that anymore. You know, one single fuck up and you're getting hated for the next week. No streamer wants a community like that. You should want a community that's like, if you fuck up, you know, you get the criticism and then they move the fuck on. You don't want a community that's going to Oh, he fucked up. Let's ruin his life for the next week. Nobody wants that. Because you put your heart and your soul into streaming. It takes a lot out of you. You put your, your entire energy into streaming. You know, and you just, you hope that the people you're putting your energy towards appreciate it. And I have definitely felt unappreciated for, you know, many, many months at a time. As, you know, for the past two years. There's only... A small period of time where I felt appreciated on YouTube. On Twitch, I always felt appreciated. The community was so much and literally fucking awful. And you know what? The ones that do, the people that do appreciate the content that I've provided, I very much appreciate you guys for that. Um, but obviously I'm talking about the people that were never appreciative. Let's say there's a streamer that, I mean, I don't even need to make a theoretical example. Case on money, spent all his time and energy doing exactly what everyone wanted, and then he got fucked over in the end. Why the fuck would anybody want a community like that?
appreciated by me. Seems like you have the longest career, one of the toughest mediums imaginable. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that, homie. Yeah, and I do appreciate every single person in the chat psych world at the moment, so thank you guys. I was on your Reddit every day, so I admit I was kind of mad when you closed it at first, but now I get why you did it. I mean, you know, at the time, it, why I closed it is up for debate. There's many different reasons, but now after all of that has passed, at this point, I don't look, I don't regret it, you know what I mean? It's a learning experience, and I feel like if I didn't close it, it would have just gotten worse and worse and worse and nothing worth reading anymore, you know? I mean, by the time I closed it, there was really nothing worth reading on it anymore. It was just pretty bad with criticisms and all this shit all over the place. But not even good criticisms, just like fucked up shit. You closed it because you were threatened by Brent, but it was a mistake. Erwa, I was threatened for, by, by him for sure. Um, but I also, you know, thought about, I thought about it pretty long and hard myself too. And I didn't like the direction it was going. And, you know, people will say like, oh, if you just streamed and you just didn't do fucked up shit, it wouldn't have went in that direction. But no, I, it was too late. I had already promoted it to go in that direction, which was a mistake. I should, have always, I should have always removed hate threads off it from the very beginning, but, you know, you live and you learn, and I've definitely learned from that. I was always just afraid of moderation, afraid to moderate things, because I always wanted people to, you know, speak their mind, but I've soon realized that there are some people on the internet that should not be allowed to speak their mind. Update on Mixer Partnership. Um... I mean, I don't have any updates right now, at the moment. If you hyped at the streamer house for months, then you never stream. That's why everyone's so angry. I mean, there was a lot of stress on my shoulders. There was a lot of shit going on. You know what I mean? I had a, I had a lot of things going on, and I, it was very hard. It seems like going down a different road requires a lot of coordination with mods. Organizing people is fucking hard. It is. Just look at 8chan. People speak their mind and shoot them at Walmart. It's true. I I think there's people on the internet who should not be allowed to speak their mind. Probably
Some people, uh, some staff on Mixer said it's an average like a month, but we'll see. A month seems like a very long fucking time to have to wait for membership or a partnership. Some staff was trying to talk to you when you went off the other day. What do you mean, do? What, what were they trying to say? Like what? In my chat or what? They are quite strict giving it out of Mixer. Yeah, it seems like Mixer is pretty strict on who they get partnered to, which is odd. But I'm sure I'll get it in due time. They're just probably trying to make sure I'm not going to break TOS. I think that is what they are concerned about. So I just have to keep proving that I am not going to break TOS. On Tips Chat, was it that uh, that, that killer dude? What were they trying to say? They look through your old VODs to see if you have, I think. What do you mean? Oh yeah, he said, yeah, he said I need to stream first. That's, that is true. Yeah, I saw that message. Although I think he was just uh, joking around. But, <coughs> obviously, Staff have watched my streams on there. Do podcasts on Mixer? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I mean, I could do a podcast with, like, with Mixer streamers, but like I said, they. There's only like Fortnite streamers on there, so I don't know how interesting they would be for a podcast. The new, the potential for a new IRL streamer to find an audience getting hot, hosted by you is huge. Yeah, I mean, it is huge. That's why I was saying that if anyone streams IRL on Mixer, I would be willing to host them because, you know, then we can cultivate some, uh, a new, healthier, you know, IRL content community. I guess if anyone wants like a short-term goal of mine, that would be my short-term goal, would be growing an IRL community on Mixer that, you know, that accompanies their TOS. Because I think that'd be very easy to do, and I think it'd be fun for me. And I also wouldn't have to worry about, you know, degeneracy, because they have a TOS that they would have to follow. How do you? How often do you plan doing YouTube member streams? Now that you have so many members, um, I mean, I'll, I, you know, I'll do member streams pretty often. Like, I mean, I always do fucking member streams, but it just depends. Where are the highlight mods coming out? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do need to... Something I always wonder, why when SSJ kicked out Volt Sad, you didn't try to fight it harder. Then you lied to us, saying SSJ was telling you stuff, but he wasn't, he kicked him out, and that's why Volt was mad. Well, I mean, if you really want to go back and talk about that old news, then yes, I did try to fight for Volt Sad when SSJ tried to kick him out. Uh, and my... What his response to that was, if Voldasad doesn't leave, then you have to leave as well. And at the time, I didn't have any money to rent a new apartment. And I didn't want to waste money on hotels, since I couldn't even rent a new apartment. So I was pretty much in a checkmate. And I couldn't really do anything. But, you know, I tried. Yeah, it's not the phone that's lagging, it's the data. We're in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, so that's why it's so laggy right now. If someone's trying to get in the game, now would be the time to try it on Mixer, that is true. You're wasting your channel and subs in the IRL trip from Japan and Canada without highlight bots. Yeah, I do need to make more highlight videos. I've been not making highlight videos because I'm trying to, I was, you know, past few months, been trying to lay low but I should do highlight videos, you are absolutely right. Especially if, you know, I do some mixer stuff. Way to stand up for your friend. Like I said, I tried to stand up for him. I could not afford to fucking move out of the place. So, I didn't want to be fucking homeless. Yeah, 
you need to use the live view again to get decent quality to make highlight videos. That is definitely true. Although the phone's not that bad. The phone quality is in a good reception area. It's really not that bad. But the live view is obviously so much better. Uh, no. Think of an idea for a big event? Well, I think uh, a big event, you know, would be the, the Europe RV thing. So I think that is like the next big event thing that we could do. Honestly, we could do the fucking ball on Mixer again. That was really fun that we did on YouTube. 5G is going to make the live view obsolete. Well, whenever 5G actually decides to come out. We're at a gas station right now. Yeah, the quality has decreased, Marcus, because I'm not using a live view. But, I mean, if 5G comes out, then it definitely doesn't matter. Where is their 5G already? Your Mount Fuji VOD would have made a viral video easily. Well, I could still highlight the Mount Fuji thing. You know, it's never too late to do that. Because, you know, highlight videos are meant to attract new viewers, so they wouldn't have already seen it yet. So I could still do that at any time. Which I probably should do, because it would make a good video. I don't know about a viral one, but it would make at least a good video. Renting a tour bus for a Europe trip? Well, tour buses are mad expensive, though. Uh, I mean, I have someone looking into stuff right now, so we'll see what he finds. Any plan to speak any new languages? No. I tried to speak Japanese. Everyone was right. It's way too hard, and I did not have the time to do that. <laughs> I thought it would be so easy, but it's, it's really hard. But maybe one day. Yo, thank you, Neff. Appreciate that, bro. I know I'm late to the party, but where are you going, Ice? I'm just driving back home. We dropped off Kimberly's cat in Missouri, so we're driving back home. It's, it's, we still have another, like, seven or six hours to go of driving, so. What drugs are you on? You made that tweet? No drugs. I was just like, oh, I'm going to try to learn a new language. It'll be easy, but not easy. Why not just find a viewer that'll make highlights? Well, I have an editor, so that's not the problem, Vaughn. I do have an editor. I mean, there's no problem, like I said. I could just do it. What do you and Kim listen to in the car? You gotta get podcasts. Um, I mean, we typically drive with no music or nothing. We drove all the way from Texas to Missouri, and the entire 12 hours, we didn't listen to anything. The radio was off. I prefer complete silence when we're driving. Um, you know, she likes listening to music, but... I like complete and utter silence because then I can think, you know what I mean? I can't really think if I'm listening to stuff. It sounds really boring and monotonous, but thinking is very fun. I don't know how to explain it. Like, uh, I just close my eyes, or I just, if I'm driving, keep my eyes open, I just look at the road, I just think about things. And time just fucking flies. In the chat. Ice always putting in the hard yards. I mean, Fuji was the last minute decision. I respect that. <laughs> it was definitely last minute. Let me see. Ninja was set up by Twitch to ruin reputation. Okay, thank you for the member, dude. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't think anybody was set up by Twitch, but thank you, dude. I would go... See what's in the gas station, bro. We we are streaming at very low quality right now, so I don't think you guys will see anything but pixels. And she's coming back out anyways, so it doesn't matter. When am I climbing Everest, bro? Probably never. There's not even internet on Mount Everest, so what would be the point? This for me, please. Yeah, thank you, Max Fried. I appreciate that, homie. Sorry, I had to stop. I was very thirsty. See, exit the chat. What was her saying? Here you go. I'm gonna get something to drink too, actually. What? That's not how you have to open it. Sorry. You want me to turn, open it the right way? Yeah, can you open it the right way? I'm gonna shake out too. Hold on. I'm gonna get a drink. Where's my wallet? It's not really in there. Are you sitting 
Yeah, the leg is on the side. The leg's on the side of the chair. We're not drinking a Red Bull right now, no. If I drink a Red Bull, I will not sleep when I get home at 5 a.m. I mean, babe, just take my car. Alright. Is there a pen? Here, I'm gonna mute it. One sec. No, I wouldn't leak it, but I think it's I think it's in the, under the chair. I'm pretty sure it's underneath the chair. Like either you're, or either you're sitting on it or it's on the side of the chair. I don't know. Can I just use your card then? You can come in with me and you can give him the card. Yeah. How bad is the quality right now? Is it just straight pixels? It's so humid in Arkansas. Oh my god. It's like Florida, dude. It's literally so fucking humid. How do people live here? I, mean, I guess I live in Florida and it's just as bad, but jeez. What? She's laughing at you. Oh, you just laughed at my selfie stick? Yeah. What can I say? I'm touring Arkansas. You never know when uh, you want us to you gotta get some good selfies of a tree. You never know when you gotta get some good selfies with a tree. <laughs> like a tree, yeah, you know, like like a like with bark. Alright, let's see, fucking some of the drink real quick. Bro, they got candy and shit. Fuck. Alright. Uh the fuck do you drink up on car rides like Dr. Pepper or something? I'm gonna get a Mountain Dew. God, I'm so unhealthy, but whatever, dude. Code red. Let's get this fucking orange one. Ew. What? Orange. You don't like orange? I mean, you're drinking it, not me. Orange is amazing. An icy? No. No icy. It's gonna give me a brain freeze. I don't like that. Alright. There's no fucking food I want. Actually, yes, there are. Jumbo jelly beans, dude. Look at this. Ridiculous. Look at this dog. Oh, that's a dashund. That's cute. That's, that Snoopy could eat that. He'd eat his own kind. Fruit smoothie, bro. No, I don't like the cold stuff. It gives me like it gives me a brain freeze. I don't like that. How you doing? Yeah, that's it. Jumbo jelly beans and orange Mountain Dew. I'm a fucking child. I don't give a fuck though. It's great. Yeah, YouTube in Arkansas. What? Where are we at right now? Presky. 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 Yeah. This is it like a small town? Mm -hmm. oh. Interesting. What is there to do out here? Nothing. Oh, okay. Look at trees. Look at trees. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Find some meth in the bathroom. Come on. No. I mean, I mean, to be honest, you're probably right. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Here, so it's a gen. Those are some off-brand jelly beans too, bro. I don't care. Jumbo jelly beans. It sounds good as fuck. $12 zero sub so I don't even notice for one dollar in my bank account, even better. <sighs> Free content, bro. What's up? <laughs> Alrighty. Block of cheese, I know. Oh fuck. Dude, I did not I drank this fucking shake from from Sonic and my stomach does not feel good now. Like they they fucking gave me some whack ass fucking shake that makes me sick. So. Bro, they have a fucking United States flag at a gas station. This is some American shit. Arkansas is straight America. 
Alrighty. Oh my gosh. Jeez. I feel like I have to take a shit. Well, I'll take a shit later. I'm not doing that right now. The Clintons live in Arkansas? Really? No, they don't. Why the fuck would somebody... Why would anyone want to live in Arkansas if they have the opportunity to not live in Arkansas? Like the Clintons. <laughs> I mean, no offense to anyone who lives in Arkansas. No offense to anyone who lives in Arkansas, but why would you want to live in Arkansas? Hmm. That's some good ass shit. Try media sharing on Mixer? No. No, dude, I'm just. What? Someone's just gonna donate some fucking weird shit. There's no reason to do media sharing on Mixer. Only you can hear me. They can't hear me chew. It's not that loud. It's just when you're in the car with me. You usually said the N-word on your stream you didn't get banned? Yeah, but let's not test the waters. <laughs> you know what I mean? I noticed EBZ made Shy Giggle so much. Yeah, I think, I think they have a thing. <sighs> you eat fast food every day, and I'm unhealthy, yes I am. I, I know, I know, I need to work on my health. This is my dinner, Mountain Dew and jelly beans. This is absolutely amazing, I love America, dude. Mmm, orange flavored Mountain Dew, that's fucking amazing. You have no idea. Mm. It's just off the charts amazing. But nothing like the jelly beans. You want one? your ways almost mid 20s <laughs> what do you mean what does that mean oh with my health yeah my the jewel smoking the jelly beans the soda i'm just gonna die one day i probably have 10 years of my life left and then i'm gonna have a heart attack wouldn't it be amazing if actually never mind i'm gonna say something but it was gonna be a joke but probably tasteless but it would be very bold it would be very believable if I die from my bad diet. Like that. I'll probably change my diet soon enough, though. I mean, that's fine. I don't really care. She's mad that I took her drink out of the cup holder. No, you, like, took it out and threw it. Because it wasn't even in the way. It was on the jewel. It was on the sacred jewel. Now my jewel is wet with water. Okay. I don't think you understand how sacred this thing is. <laughs> You're just worried sometimes. Only sometimes. It's fine. Uh. uh -oh. What? Drunk. Out by a UFO. Oh my gosh, look, there was a little armadillo. Oh, it was so cute. No, that wasn't an armadillo. That was, that was an alien. No, it wasn't. That was an alien. It was crawling. If our car breaks down right now, we're going to get abducted. We're going to get abducted by aliens. By armadillos. No, we're going to get murdered by a serial killer. Sorry, get down the road, bro. Okay, I'm gonna try to turn around at this person's house. Have you ever 
stop and get out of the car in the middle of nowhere, just stop and look up at the sky. Yeah, I do that pretty often, but it's cloudy, <laughs> so there's nothing to see. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. What about someone like I'm speeding down the road? Nah, this is like 100 miles of just nothing, so don't worry. I know. We would see their headlights. Okay, now we gotta go and be really slow so we don't kill that armadillo. Which is roadkill, it's fine. No, it was moving, I watched it. It's just future roadkill, it's fine. Wait, maybe we can pull over and like see it across the road and like see if we can see it. You want to pull over and look at an armadillo. Yeah. Okay, we won't. It's fine. We can if you want. It's just an it's a it's an armadillo. It's yeah, gonna. It you probably has rabies. I mean, I'm not gonna touch it. It it's going to attack you. Armadillos don't attack. I mean, we'll see about that. Let's pull over and, and talk to the armadillo. Okay, let's Thank you, Cody. I appreciate that, bro. Let me see. When will you do a Mario Party and Mixer with Kimberly and Shy? Uh, I mean, we could do that at any point, honestly. But you would see why Voldasad would be sad. He's your best friend, and you left him to be homeless. The house was centered around you, and you had the power if there would be no point, so they needed you. Yeah, but that, yeah, but obviously SSJ didn't see it that way. And Voldasad was never going to be homeless, dude. He made $6,000 on Purple Army Radio. He was fine. Like, he's an adult. I don't have to babysit him every, every single day. You know what I mean? He was fine. The opening scene of Cheapers Creepers. I mean, basically, this is where we, this is where a serial killer would kill us. that coming over? Uh, I think he's going to come over at the end of this month, like August 20th or something, so we'll probably see him around then. And he'll stay for, uh, for like a week or something. Then we're going to go over to Rune West with Tony. And, uh, That's what it's called? Rune yeah. West? Yeah, we're going to go see Tony and hang out with him. It's going to be fun. How did you know there was... There have been many sightings of Sasquatch in Arkansas. Dude, Sasquatch is not real. It's just a giant monkey. Giant monkey that escaped from the zoo, like, a hundred years ago. It's not actually a real thing. Obviously, in Arkansas, in a place where everyone has guns, Sasquatch would have been shot by now, like, for sure. He'd be dead. <laughs> so, I thought it's, like, sighted, like, everywhere, though. There can't be, like, more than one, right? Well, that makes it I even... Mean, it does that makes it even less believable if there's only one Sasquatch. Yeah. If anything, I don't think they'd be in Arkansas. It's probably in Washington where all the mountains are. It's the same thing as Bigfoot, right? Yeah. Why does it have two names? I don't know. Maybe one is like Native American. The Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Oh my god. No. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry. What I'm the fuck? There's an armadillo. Why the fuck him. did you scream, dude? I, I didn't want to hurt him. What the fuck's wrong with you? That scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. What the hell's wrong with you? Did you see him? It's a, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Run it over, dude. Fucking. No, I don't want to kill why the fuck did you scream like that? I'm so scared. I'm sorry. Dude, you just scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we have to see him and he's okay. <laughs> Did y'all see her face? Her, she made like a face of horror, dude. I was so scared of killing him. Like honestly, just fucking run it over. No. It's better than swerving and crashing the car. Like but nobody like, was around us. It wasn't like it was like. It's a fucking armadillo. No, dude. it's not like. <laughs> I didn't swerve the car, and it's not like anyone was behind us or in front of us. Like I knew it was just us. Yeah, that's what everyone says before they crash and die. No, that's not true. <laughs> if it was me, like, motherfucker, you just ran in the street, I'm sorry, I'm not swerving this car, you're getting hit. <laughs> like, type shit. I'm sorry. Yo, it wasn't even a scream that, that scared me, it was your fucking face. I look over, and your, <laughs> your face is horror, dude. I literally thought... I didn't want to kill it. I literally thought... I would have been sad the whole rest of the ride home. We were talking about Bigfoot too. I literally thought you saw a fucking Bigfoot, dude. I thought we were about to die from a fucking monster. I thought you saw Bigfoot. I thought, yeah, I thought we were about to die from a monster, dude. I don't know what the fuck that was. No, I just didn't want to kill him. Yo, 
somebody sent me a freeze frame of her face. Dude. Let me see it. Literally. Wait, I want to see it. Thought you were gonna crash this car. <laughs> I just didn't want to kill him. I was so scared. You don't feel bad if you run over an animal. If if an animal runs in the fucking street, I have two options. I swerve the car, potentially crash, or I run the animal over. And I will always. Or if there's nobody behind you, you can just stop. Yeah, I don't. No, like, why would I take the risk? I'm not gonna look over to see if there's someone behind me. I'm gonna run the fucking animal over. No, oh my gosh. It's I'm a... gonna look and see if it's okay to stop. Yeah, but in a life or death situation, let's say if there was another car. You don't have, there's no time. No, but that's if there's another car. We already talked about how there wasn't. Yeah, but still, you taking the half a second to check to see if there's another car could mean life or death. I would always just run over the animal. It's better than swerving your car. It's a fucking armadillo. Like, who gives a fuck? I mean, obviously, I don't want to hit an armadillo, but it's better than crashing. Okay, well, then my first instinct was wrong. I mean, it's not wrong. It's just, you know, it's just different. You can always be aware of your surroundings on the highway at night. I mean, that's true. I probably wouldn't have even seen it. If I was driving, I probably would have just... I wouldn't have even seen it. I would have just... My mind would have been somewhere else. I would have just accidentally run over it. Also, I don't think that one was an armadillo. That was an ugly rat. What was this that? Is, that that's, no, that was definitely an armadillo. No, it wasn't. What, uh, what, is, what is a giant rat doing in the street? I don't know what animal that was, but that wasn't a cute armadillo. I don't think armadillo is they armadillos are oh but that's over the enemy once with a dog. Now you make me feel bad for not running a, a possum over. I don't need to feel bad. I think I told the story before, but I'll say it again. I saw a dying cat. So I saw a cat in the middle of the street that obviously got hit by a car and it was like twitching and like trying to crawl and like I don't know, like crawl somewhere and like it was like clearly fucked up like it got ran over by a car and I pulled over and I tried to go pick it up and like save it and as I was walking towards the cat to pick it up another car ran it over and it fucking died just right in front of me that was gnarly the, the noise that cat made was awful I'm sure that was actually I remember what I am pretty sure it was the person's cat like it was a it was a person's cat because it was in front of their house it was like a house in the middle of nowhere. Oh. So I picked up the cat and I put it on their fucking doorstep. Oh my gosh. To like, with like a note that said like, your cat got hit by a car or something. Oh my gosh. I think that's the right thing to do, right? Put it in front of the doorstep with the note. Your cat got hit by a car. Or would you prefer to see your cat go missing? Then to wake up and you open the door and there's your fucking cat right over. I don't want to think about that. Let's talk about, like, anything else. What do you think, Chad? I thought that was a good thing to do. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it could have just, it was the only house, it was, in, it was in the middle of nowhere, so. One time, okay, so one time I saw there was, like, this dead dog on the side of the road, and it was just there, and I could tell that it had to be someone's dog, because it had a red collar around its neck, and so I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need to go get that dog and call whoever's number's that's their dog on the side of the road. So me and my friend went to go get the dog and like, you know, take it to the owner or call them or whatever. And then when I got up to it, it 
was not a red collar. It was its intestines nice. around its neck. And oh. I don't even know if it was a dog. And so there I'm like looking at this animal and I like don't know what kind of animal it is or I, I don't know. And I, I couldn't do anything with it because it, that wasn't a collar and that wasn't but whatever. I didn't know what to do and I just, I'm just like, well, it's, I guess it's off the street now and I guess it should just go home. And I felt so upset and defeated because I like thought I was gonna like do like what you did and like give it to the person and be like, oh, I'm so sorry I found your animal. Like, you know, it's not like it's giving them good news, but that was just awful. Like thinking it was like a collar and it was like there. How does that even happen? The fuck? I don't know. It was really sad. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate also, that's a bad story. I'm sorry. Like now. Let's go. It I'm goes, adding to the bad mood. It, it goes with the theme. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Frieza. Appreciate the members, dude. How did you... Yo, dude, how you doing? How was your break? I wasn't on break, uh, chemical plays. I was... I've been shooting on Mixer for the past week. <laughs> was he sent you a freeze frame with a jump scare? Let's see. Oh, no. <laughs> let me, let, let's see what you look like here. I can't show it to the stream because I'm using my phone, but you can show it to the stream. No, it's just my, that's my face. You can't see me. I don't think, I don't know, he just sent me a picture of my face. <laughs> Look at my face. You're so scared. Let me show the chat. Why are you so scared? Bro, cause you fucking, <laughs> what do you, I scream? you screamed loud as fuck and I look over and your face is in, is horror. Okay, I wanna kill it. Literally so, so <laughs> fucking weird, dude. Like you scared the fuck out of me. It's not weird. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't log in with your phone, actually. Just in palestings out, Pepper is doing great. Well, that's good. Wait, why? What do you mean, why? Okay, you gotta make a video telling people you're on Mixer. I bet most didn't even know. Yeah, I probably, like, if I decide to do, like, a stream exclusively on Mixer, then I would make a video about it. Otherwise, you know, there's no need. I mean, getting 15,000 followers on Mixer without a video is pretty good, though. There was a bunch of angry dogs and a stepbrother back in the day had kittens, and we got one and threw it over the fence to see where the dogs were barking, and I feel bad now. What the fuck, dude? Bro, you, you probably should get your... <laughs> probably should go to... You should go see a doctor, bro. What do you mean? You threw a cat to a bunch of rabid dogs? That's awful. Thank you, Texas Money. Appreciate that, dude. on YouTube for 10 minutes before you go live on Mixer. I mean, I, I was doing that for a couple of the days, but I prefer not to do that every fucking time I want to stream with Mixer. That seems like spam, and I don't think people would really appreciate that. Hey, Paul, seems like you're pushing your brand towards the edge way back from Twitch because the trolls were getting the traction. Bad move, in my opinion. Just know that I'll keep watching you and Kimberly till the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't want, I mean, the, the, it was some bad traction, though. Not every traction is good, good traction. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta scale out what you want, what you don't want. Coming back to New York time, any soon? Uh, probably not gonna go to New York anytime soon. I don't really like, I don't really like New York, but we'll see. Mixer notifications don't work, unfortunately. It's only caught one stream. Yeah, I think you have to have the app open to get a notification, which is not good at the moment. I wish we were on a highway that didn't have animals. Good luck finding a highway like that. Unless you're in a city. Bjorn called Kimberly annoying. No, she's not annoying. Bjorn likes Kimberly, what do you mean? Or that's what he said at least. Sorry if I missed, but what's the target date for the EU trip? We're planning it on September 8th. That's when she has three weeks off work, so I think September, early September is going to be when we do it. Do you plan on doing more gaming? WoW Classic's coming out soon. Uh, I've never played WoW before, so playing WoW Classic could be interesting. Because I've never played it before, so it could be interesting to give it a try. But I don't know if it'd be like a thing that I actually get into. I played a lot of Guild Wars and I really liked that, but I don't know if WoW was anything like Guild Wars. 
Guild Wars is really, really good. The first one was way better than the second one. I think WoW was more like the second one, and I didn't really like the second one that much, compared to the first one at least. Do a VR chat stream maybe. VR chat is cool, but it gets really aged really quick. People just, they come up to you and they fucking scream the mic and it gets really, really aged. Horror games are always good though. Wow, sucks you in. I would love to play a game that sucks me in. I haven't, I, no game in recent times has been able to really suck me in. You know, there are games that I play for a couple days and then they get, you know, then they get old, they get boring. I would really love for a game to be able to suck me in again. But I think most, most modern games aren't that great. Like I'm looking forward to Modern Warfare. You know, I think Modern Warfare will, will suck me in for at least a month. But after that, I don't know. The only game that I still consistently play on my PlayStation that has sucked me in is The Last of Us. The Last of Us has the absolute best multiplayer I've ever played. And I've been playing The Last of Us multiplayer for years, since 2014. You know, I'm level 300 on there, so... That's the only game. But, I think the... I think the 64 player ground war in Modern Warfare will really suck me in for a little bit. I really, I, I hope it does at least. It's all good, Javier, do not worry about it. Play Last of Us with some viewers? I mean, I could. I'm a fucking beast at The Last of Us. I could stream that and I get, my KD is 2.0. Uh, like, I'm really good at the game, but nobody fucking wants to, nobody fucking wants to watch The Last of Us, you know, it's, a, it's such a niche game, such a small community, most of you probably don't want to watch that. Like, I could stream it one day, but it's not something I would stream for very long. My Phonics is doing pretty good on Twitch playing RuneScape. Yeah, he's, he's doing pretty good, yesterday I saw him at 1300 viewers, so he's doing a really good job. That's what he was doing before he got banned as well, so, while doing crazy ass shit. So now he's not doing crazy shit, he still gets the same, it's pretty good. I always nearly taught the board support my homie who just mows people down and get 28 kills per round. Kyle, there's no way your friend gets 28 kills per round in The Last of Us. Because each team only has 20 lives, so there's no way. I actually played with this one guy, he streams The Last of Us on YouTube, his name's, the, his name's an individual. I played with him on stream, on his stream, uh, two nights ago. Or three nights ago or something. That was pretty fun. Have I thought about doing a live Q&A? I mean, every day I stream is basically a live q and I mean, right? Did you see Gary and Lucha's No Jumper stream? Uh, I did not watch it, no. We were busy driving today, what happened on it? I know they're doing like an open mic or something. Kills own team members for KD. <laughs> Danger close. Spawn Newton. Sometimes the bitrate goes down to like 70, <laughs> and even 70 bitrate is not enough for 144p, so we're just going to have to bear with the, the lag here and there. <laughs> What's that? I'm just laughing at you screaming again. Yeah, it's scary, dude. Am I going to stream the whole drive? Probably not going to stream the whole drive because I'm going to get tired at some point. <laughs> 
I mean, it's a seven and a half hour drive from, from here, so, I mean, we're not going to stream seven and a half hours of driving, that seems ridiculous, and then if I stream the whole time, then I, you know, Kimberly has to drive the whole seven fucking hours. Did you say how many nukes and cod? Oh, I didn't get... I only got one nuke and cod one time, and it was with One Man Army, Danger Close, fucking noob tube spawn killing people on, uh, on Rundown. That was the only time I got a nuke. Because I was just not really good enough, and it wasn't really that fun to get a 7 kill Harrier, so I, I typically just ran a uh, fucking Predator, Harrier, and Emergency Airdrop. That's basically what I did. We're just happy you're live on YouTube, even if it's a long, <laughs> long drive stream all night, I'm down. Hey, well that's good, Tingly. When you get bored, you use the scan feature on AM radio, sometimes there's some weird shit in the sticks. The AM feature, what do they, what do they, what is, what is AM on radio, what is that? Is it like public access radio or something? see what they have on AM radio. I'm scanning through it though, there's no channels except that one static you on there. 1961. His, his views on life, personal development, and UFOs are probably more relevant than ever and may surprise you. So hang You're on right. that. It's going to be a great conversation. Some weird shit. And now I want to move on to uh, the events of yesterday. Because yesterday I woke up to the news of the passing of Aspen Pittman. Aspen was the founder of Groove Tubes here in Los Angeles. He was a dear friend of mine going back 30 plus years. What is that? And he was a huge influence and pioneer in, in the music industry. Uh, what else is there? Aspen Pittman, who is that? Why is there so much static? Why is AM radio so bad? And this is some scary shit to listen to in the middle of nowhere. Why would you want to listen? We're, we're in the middle of nowhere. Why would anyone listen to this? I'm too Imagine listening to this some scary ass shit, bro. Okay, some Spanish shit. What else? Everything we listen to. I think those are the only two channels we got UFO fucking talk and Spanish shit. There's like sirens and stuff. That's literally all they have. Spanish house is scary because we don't know what they're saying. No, it's not the Spanish part that was scary. You're telling me this is scary? Imagine this. She's going through a haunted house all the ghosts. It's all about how she's going to take it over by a demon. This is an exorcism. Eh, tenemos que anticiparle. Eh, pues hay... I can always duck into the hound house and run with an organ. <laughs> <laughs> duck into the script room and find your place. <laughs> Don't even know what he was saying. The news about Aspen. The story started to break about Jeffrey Epstein. Oh. And my first reaction to that was, you know, no way. What? You know, suicide. That's impossible, right? Well, my next thought was about Coast to Coast AM. How is that impossible? And that was yesterday. And, uh, what? To, I do a full show on Epstein and the mystery surrounding his apparent suicide. And then I snapped out of it. I came to my senses because Epstein's death alone in a protective housing unit of the federal jail in lower manhattan 
that that story is going to be covered for years to come. It's going to be covered in the form of books and documentaries and theories. You see, it doesn't take a tinfoil hat to jump to conclusions here. It doesn't. It's a very basic this is question Alex that everyone Jones is asking right now. Show. And I do mean everyone, from the White House all the way down to you. Which is this? I mean, how does the most high-profile inmate in the federal custody right now, a billionaire, charged with sex trafficking, with a list of people around him a mile long that are influencers on this planet, how does that person... How is that person allowed to commit suicide the day after court released documents? What do you mean? It's crazy, right? I'm serious. The level of crazy is almost too much to handle. And by allowing this to happen and breaking the story in this manner has opened the door to every possible conspiracy theory you can think of. There will be Jeffrey Epstein sightings around the world for the next 20 years. Think about it. That's some weird shit. Um, like, bro, sometimes... Okay, dude, correctional officers who work in a jail can't watch inmates 24 7 sometimes it only takes 10 minutes of not looking at them for them to fucking you know do the, the, to commit suicide like it's not that hard to believe i don't know why there's conspiracies around it it takes fucking five minutes to commit suicide so if they don't watch him for five minutes it's over you know what i mean Kimberly, what would you say about the toxic people on the internet talking about your boyfriend? How does it make you feel? What is something they often get wrong you wish they would realize? Can I answer this when I'm not really tired from all the driving? Let me just skip a quick thing. Okay, say it again. What do I think of all the people that are toxic? Yeah, that you wish that they would understand. I'll, that's one thing. I wish that people understood the how hard it is that you have lied about things in the past, which like you lied about stupid stuff, which like that's on you. I don't know why you lied about something. But then when you come out with something and you're like, okay, guys, I'm coming clean. There's this, and then nobody still believes you. So I feel like that's something that like I wish that people understood because like. I think people will criticize you for everything and when you do something right that they're like they were asking you to do and you do it then everyone's just like oh well we, we told you so like it's about time and instead of being like we're, we're happy that you're finally doing this. Does that make sense? That's the thing I wish. I wish people would give you the credit when you do something that they've been asking you for if they were right. And then another thing is if you you know when you're honest I wish they would believe you. Which, like, I feel like you are honest. Like, you know what I mean? That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, that does. If it doesn't, you explain it. I told you I was tired. I mean, no, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. You, I think you explained it pretty well. The entire jail could have been bought as well. I don't know. I don't even know who I'm signing this. bodybuilder and I drank a soda and I felt sick though. Because I usually only drink water. What do you think about the conversation with Tip? You guys got into some real topics like the post streaming job hunt. Um, I think Tip has some good points. You know? And it's unfortunate the position that he's in, but or the position that he was in before he better, you know, got in a better position. But 
you know, I don't really know what to say about it. It's just, uh, it was some interesting shit that we talked about. It was interesting seeing his perspective on everything. And I wonder how the, how the perspective will change with other people as well, in the same, who end up going into his position.
yesterday we, or, uh, we started at three. Or at three, not one. We got up at one. Um, you got up at one. Whatever. <laughs> Ye yesterday we started the fucking drive at 6 a.m. And we ended up getting in Missouri at what, 9 o'clock at night? 8 o'clock? Fucking nine o'clock at night from six a.m. That's straight driving. That was cancer, dude. Do people need an account to watch your 18 plus drinks mixer? Yeah, you need an 18 plus account. Stop at Denny's for some real food. I mean, there ain't shit for like probably the next 50 miles. I'm not even hungry. I'm just like ready to eat. Yeah, I'm not very hungry either. That's a long time to drive. Yeah, it's fucking AIDS. Dude. We've been doing it two days in a row now, and I hate it. <laughs> I wish I could farm on here. Hey, that's that's a good thing about mixing. Uh, the leveling up system is really uh, interesting. Get pull over and get a hotel if you need to. Nah, that's we're we're just gonna get there. No no need for a hotel. Let's just get the fuck back home so we can you know just be home and like yeah. Let's just not. I don't want to get a hotel. Okay, if I get a hotel. If we get a hotel in the middle of nowhere, then what? Like, tomorrow's stream is going to be driving <laughs> again, so there's nothing to, like, I don't want to get a fucking hotel, I just want to get home. Do you plan on leaving in early September? Yeah, early September, for that trip. Sure. I drove from Texas to Minnesota 25 hours. Dude, that's 25 hours, that's fucking terrible, dude. Hotels in small towns have meth labs in them. I wouldn't believe that. I've been in some hotels in some small ass towns and they are fucking scuffed. They're like $70, which is great, but they're scuffed as fuck. What are your plans as far as streaming when you get back to Austin? I'd take it day by day right now, so I don't know. We'll figure it out. How close are you to the border right now? Uh, fuck, I don't know. Let's see, how close to the border? I need that. I'm about to use that. We're going straight for 381 miles. No, not right now. Can I... Hold on, we're about to pass the border to Texas in, it looks like, 20 minutes? We are currently in Tex Arcana. Tex Arcana. What do you need your phone for? There's a fucking church. That's what there is to do during the day. They go to fucking church. We are in fucking the middle of nowhere. There's nothing to do. Where am I going right now? We're just going back home. We're going back to Texas. We uh, we drove to Missouri to drop our cat off. get back. We've been driving for the past two days. We're, we're done with it. We just want to get home, dude. We're not hungry. We only need to stop. Stopping is just going to add to the fucking time to get back home. It's already going to be fucking five or six in the morning when we get back, so we don't want to make it any longer. I planned to stop, but the hotel I stopped at was horrible. Dogs bark and smelled like a whorehouse, so I checked out and drove straight through. Oh my gosh. I think every hotel in a small city or like a like a side of the highway somewhere is always gonna have fucking prostitutes and like fucking weird ass shit that are sketchy. So yeah, I would recommend not going to those hotels. My friend, she used to date a truck driver, and there's like certain lights on the back of trucks that if they're like turned on, it like basically means they're like looking for a hooker. That makes sense. I, uh, I've stopped at some hotels on the side of highways in the middle of nowhere before. They are so, they are scuffed, and it's kind of scary, like, it's just the weirdest fucking people, and I really just don't feel comfortable sleeping there sometimes, but I do it anyways, I'm tired, but it's just, I make sure I fucking put the 
padlock on the door and I'm like, it's scary, dude. It's just so scuffed. I, you know with truck drivers and prostitutes, if you're at a truck stop, it's probably in the middle of nowhere. Why would there be a prostitute in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. I, it like is a known thing. I wonder if the there's... Lights. I wonder if prostitutes... Ask them in chat. I wonder... Yeah, I mean, they, they say it's the lot lizards. If we, I wonder if there's prostitutes that just drive three hours to a truck stop just to fuck truckers and then there's get, a lot get of, in a hotel there's nearby. There's no way that the nearest truck stop to them would be three hours. Well, I'm saying like the truck stops that are in the middle of nowhere. I feel like truck drivers are the ones who watch a lot of live streams because they have all the time in the world to fucking kill. And live streams will just be there for you the whole ride of the way. Truck stops single-handedly create economics or economies in random places as part of the problem of automated truck stops destroying small towns' potential. Well, most of the truck stops that I've seen that are in the middle of nowhere legit only have the truck stop, no houses. I don't know where the workers live at. They live at the fucking truck stop or what? But there's no houses. Maybe there's like trailers or something like off the road. I don't really know. I mean, that does make sense. sleep in the truck, or oh, I mean the people who work at the at the shops. Yeah, they must be just like out in the sticks, just fucking in a trailer somewhere. You know, driving through, uh, driving to Los Angeles from uh, Las Vegas, so interesting, because you you have all these like small ass towns in the middle of like the, of the desert everywhere, dude. So you drive like, you know, 100 miles, and 100 miles away from everything else. There's just like a town with like 10 houses and like a McDonald's, a bus stop, and like a, a fucking, not a Walmart, but like a, like something, you know, like a, like a clothing store, like a department store, or like a Target or something. And it, that's all they have in that little small town. And it's so weird to me, dude. Like imagine living there, like imagine growing up there as a kid. That would just be the weirdest fucking thing. You must be isolated from the rest of the world because the internet is probably dog shit. And you can't walk or anywhere or do anything, so that must be terrible. Have you tried Round Rock Donuts yet? They make one foot by one foot donuts and also very good. I have not tried that, but that sounds like something I need to go to, give it a go. I've never seen that movie, Mr. Status. Yeah, I wish I had a fucking Tesla. Literally, just it could self-drive itself. That'd be great. I uh, fucking watch movies. Tesla self-drives. Great way to fucking make a trip. The only issue with the Tesla is most of these towns, like in Arkansas and stuff, like they don't have Tesla chargers. Like, how would you charge your Tesla? Los Angeles, all these big cities have t Tesla chargers, but no small towns can have a Tesla charger. So I don't know how you would charge your vehicle if you ran out of battery. What kind of car do we have? Uh, she has a Ford Fusion. Which is pretty good, I guess. Some random chick I met has a Tesla. She ain't making a lot of money either. Yeah, you can get a Tesla for like 30000 So that's pretty good. That's like relatively cheap, I think, for a car. They have a supercharger network and go cross country in a Tesla. What is a supercharger network? Have you figured out what to do with the $50 members? I have no idea. Like I said, I don't even know who the $50 members are unless they DM me, which one of them has DM me. So I don't even know who the other one is. So I have two. I don't know who the, I don't know who the second one is. She has a side job. Yeah, Joey, probably. What's that? You should write them a letter. Yeah, but they have, they have to DM me first so I know who they are. Yeah. I only know who one of them are. Well, ask him if he wants a letter. I mean, a letter is like the same thing as like a DM, right? Ropey, you're probably a $1 member. 
good Florida stream for the year end. So, I mean, I'll probably see my parents do for the year ends, like Christmas or Thanksgiving or something. So, I'll probably stream there at some point. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate the member, dude. Thank you, dog. Anybody taking a driving test, just take a self parking car. I don't think they have self parking cars. How do they prove it's really them? I mean, I guess they would send me a photo of their membership because it tells you what tier member you are. Video chat with $50 members? That's actually a good idea. But I mean, that's basically like a stream then. Just a real time one on one, I guess. But I'm not allowed to promote one on one stuff for for members. It's like part of the TOS on YouTube. It's fucking weird. So I, if I do something for a membership tier, I have to do it for all the per people in that tier, not just, not one on one. Yeah, it's just the air. Will I send them nudes? I mean, if I send them nudes, that'd probably be a good idea. Yo, what's up, Andre? How you doing, bro? I get a lot of fifty dollars members with some nudes, bro. Or I probably just get one, and then, they, then the person would just leak all the nudes, and now no one has to be a member. So bathwater would be like a, a better thing in that situation. What do you think about getting another manager, someone who can give sponsors and stream ideas? I mean, I don't really need another member or another manager at the moment. I mean, I have some guy who's helping me with some, with stuff, uh, and he helps give me some sponsors and things, but he's not really my manager. He's just, like, he works in the industry of, like, help, of, like, getting streamers, sponsors, and, he, he, you know, he takes, like, a cut, and that's it. But he's not my manager because he doesn't only focus on me. I had him in my, on my Twitter bio. Then I took his email off because he was getting spammed with nonsense instead of actual sponsors. Thank you, Aries. I appreciate the member. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that too. Tired, and that sounds awful. 
I mean, you guys don't want to watch me fucking drive anyways. It's fucking boring. Why did you go where you went? We went to Missouri to drop your cat off. So when we go to Europe, we don't have to worry about, you know, watching your cat. Yo, what's up, Cody? How you doing, bro? You just passed the Golden Arches. Uh, what are the Golden Arches? Don't speak for us, you want a long stream? I mean, if I'm driving, I can't really read the chat, though. Like, I mean, I can glance over every so often, but I can't really, I can't really read the chat if I'm driving, you know what I mean? And what about Snoopy? Snoopy's just gonna go to, Snoopy's just gonna go to a dog hotel. That's what, uh, although it's kind of expensive. Three weeks is $1,000 for a dog hotel. It's $45 a day. So I was thinking, uh, maybe figure out something else. Cause that's a lot. Should just, just do a swap here? Hey, or, no, just pull over here. Okay. Like off. There's a burger game right there. Like yeah, it's fine. It's, we can do a swap here. Definitely don't go to there where it says road ends. That's how we die. <laughs> Literally, just darkness everywhere. We're on a fucking e road end right now. We're gonna die. Chupacabra? It's a fucking thing that eats like dogs and sheep and stuff. Did you take it to the park? Mm, how do I... Yeah, it's connected to the car audio system. It's a, it's a vibration. Are you sitting on it? Oh, it's right here. That's not the... You can come back in. dashboard, but 
but then it might there might be vibrations and stuff. the thing that holds the phone. I don't know where all our shit went, Chef. Damn, I don't know where the fuck this shit went. You can get back in. Is it on the side? Is it on the side of the door? Like, is it, is it on the side of the door? Daniel, just Tokyo and Osaka. Those things are cool. Well, those places are cool. Alrighty. I don't know where this piece is, chat. I can't. I can't prop the phone up. How? How is that walking up behind you run fast? Imagine. Imagine. What is that? Somebody's walking up behind us. I'm like, I'm like asleep right now. <laughs> I'm like trying to like pay attention, but I'm like, I'm asleep. You think that Burger King is open? I didn't see the Burger King. I wonder if they have rubber bands. I don't know what I found one. But it might be too small, but let's try it out. It may not hold the phone up, but let's see. Throw the in the back seat, that's. What do you mean? Then you can't see anything. I'll be throwing it in the back seat. This just might work. Amazing. Perfect. You see, it's good. <sighs> you just needed that. Alrighty. I won't really be able to read the chat very well, so... If I don't respond to your message, it's because I'm driving. <laughs> So, where do I go? Right there, right. 24 7 driving is right now, right dude? Fucking. It says we'll be there in five hours. So. 365 miles to go. Amazing. That's gonna seem like forever though. I mean, I guess. 
guess it's not that hard. It's just cruise control it. Do you use cruise control? Just honestly. I've, I'm just going to use cruise, cruise control and then I'm good. I mean, it makes driving very easy. 75 to speed limit, cruise control at that. Easy.
Who is going with you? I see Europe. Sounds like another RV trip around Europe. Yesterday when I drove, I just thought about, you know, life things. Dallas is 160 miles away. It's not bad. I don't know who's going to Europe at the moment, but I, like I said, I think it'd be... If, if it's up to me, I would like Grimoire, uh, you know, EBZ, Gary, people like that. You know, really cool, kind of like uh, people that understand boundaries. I think that's going to be a good start. Tracks it, Andy. Although, if I take EBZ, he's not allowed to have media or TTS while he's streaming with me. I just won't allow it. It's either he, if he, and if he doesn't want to turn off that shit, then he has to stream somewhere else, like, not around me. Um, because his shit's gonna give me banned a mixer. <laughs> I guess he's not coming. <laughs> I think he would listen to that. I think he would come and like not have media on while I'm streaming. I think he would do that. I just don't want him to get me banned on Mixer. I don't think he understands how bad, you know, racist media can be if I'm streaming on a site that can ban me for that. <laughs> because all EBC knows is YouTube, you know? That's all he knows. He doesn't really understand Twitch and all these other things that have TOSs, I think. Solo streams for Mixer and YouTube streams for everyone else. Yeah, but if I'm doing a group trip, I, that, that can't really be a thing, you know? If I'm doing a group trip, I want to stream with the group. If I do a group trip, everyone's going to have to stream at different times. We can't all be streaming at the same time. That is cancer. Like when EBC was streaming at the same time that I was streaming. Like, we, we should have split it up. We should not stream at the same time. It's fucking AIDS. RV 24/7 stream be on YouTube or Mixer. Well, if I do an if I do a 24/7 stream in uh, in RV, what I would probably do is put the 24/7 stream on Mixer and then stream normally on YouTube. So that gives people reason to go to Mixer when I'm you know not streaming normally. If I were to do that, that's probably how I would do it. Yeah, when everyone streams at the same time, it's, it makes it bad because then pe the, the people you're hanging out with are no longer interacting with each other. They're interacting with their streams and everyone's talking over themselves and is on like a different page of the conversations and it makes it really fucking awkward. EBC would follow that in Hawaii. You know, when I told him to turn off his stream so someone else can stream, he was pretty complacent with doing that, so. If I did the 24-7 stream on Mixer, I obviously would not have media. TTS, I could easily moderate that. No, no, I'm he's the chief. Can't wait to see that those tracksuit picks up along the way. Grimoire will be good shit. That would be good shit. I don't know about Lucha over EBZ though. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. What's up, Red? Start playing Halo so you can be ready for the new one. I've never played Halo before. Well, actually, I played Halo a couple times before because my friend back in the day used to play Halo. So, I don't know. I don't really like Halo. I think it's shit, to be honest. I think the mechanics are just, they're just not my thing and all the jumping, all the weird shit, I don't like it. No media equals no money. 
I mean, to be honest, if I'm doing a 24-7 cam, I don't really care about the money. Like, if I do the 24-7 cam on Mixer, the intention would not do what would not be to make the most amount of money. Because if that was the intention, I would just do it on YouTube. Put the 24-7 cam on YouTube, and then whatever. The intention there would just get people to go over to Mixer. So, I mean, I didn't... Like, the... The money that I could make from media, I don't really, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't outweigh the, the cons of, of, like, having a bad, a bad image, potentially. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can make thousands of dollars off some fucking racist media, but I don't want to do that. You know, I, there's other ways that I can try to make thousands of dollars. I don't need to have racist fucking donations. In the long run, that does more damage than than not. You know what I mean? That shit does long-term damage. Like, there's no way you get sponsors or anything like that. And that makes way more money than a fucking $5 donation. Where's my fucking jewel? Fucking lost it. Lost everything here. Have someone moderate it. It's a lot harder to moderate media though, because you don't know what's in a media until you hear it. And I can't expect my moderators to listen to all the fucking media before it goes through. Whereas the TTS, my moderators can easily read the TTS before it goes through to make sure it's, you know, clean. So, would this count as RV free then? I mean, it would, yeah. It would, I would advertise it as, as that. But I'll put it this way. Let's say, do an RV stream, it does really good. People like it, you know, it's getting a lot of views. If I have racist media, or if I have media that's not being moderated and it ends up getting racist, sure, I could make like $5,000 from that. Or I could not have media, not have to worry about it. And then the next trip I make, I can leverage the numbers that I made on my last stream to get me a sponsor for 10000 on the next one. And now I've made double what the media would have gotten me. That is the smart decision, as opposed to like the, the immediate money, you know what I mean? That's not something a lot of people understand, though, that play the fuck, their fucking media. <laughs> then again, I don't see a lot of people getting sponsorships that, you know, play the media anyways. Like, no offense to anybody, you know what I mean, but very hard sponsor-friendly, so that's, you know, the main reason. But, uh, even if I had a brand-friendly stream, it's still not very easy to get sponsors because sponsors love the low ball, you know? When I was on Twitch, uh, there, were, there was this one sponsor. It was a fucking, I think it was Dane Glory. It was like a, a media, like a, not a media, it was like a, um, a game on the app, like a phone app game. They wanted to pay me $2,000 to play the game for five hours, and it was a shit game. And I, that, that's a low ball, you know, I'm like, I don't want that, that's like $2,000, I could make that in a couple streams without playing your shitty fucking game. So instead, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna throw out a number, you know, 10000 and then uh, see, you know, then they, they came back at me with $8,000, I'm pretty, I, I don't really remember, I think it was 8000 that I got paid for that. Or maybe it was more, I don't know, or maybe I threw out 20 and I got 15 I don't really remember, but something like that. Yeah, Hyphonix is definitely done with IRL. Like he just he's complacent with, with uh, RuneScape, which is totally fair. Like I said, IRL is not that lucrative. <laughs> There's only one lucrative thing about IRL that doing a desktop stream will not get you in for the most part. And that and the lucrative thing about IRL 
is the, the positive news articles that you can get read about you. The amount of clout that you can get outside of the normal streaming world. You know what I mean? The amount of clout that I've gotten from, like, you know, The New Yorker, Rolling Stones, random YouTube fucking YouTubers, you know? That shit I wouldn't have got if I was just gaming. So, because now, because IRL is more like a real-world thing. So real-world people who don't know about streaming will be more interested in it. That's the only good thing about it. Well, the, the only lucrative thing about it. You know, but money-wise, desktop streaming is way, way more lucrative. I mean, there's plenty of people who have watched my streams that have no idea about commu- or have no idea about streaming whatsoever. You know, they just they came across my shit, and they're like, they've never watched any other stream. Casey's not really a streamer though, so I don't know. About, I don't know about that one. How many followers do you have on Twitch? I had two hundred thousand on Twitch, which really isn't that much. Like when I think about it, I don't have that many followers on Twitch. I, I had two hundred thousand, and I think my views on Twitch was like, I think I had like five million views all, all together on Twitch. Like, it was a pretty, like, like, I didn't have a big channel. I had a good amount of viewers per follower, but I didn't have a big channel. I mean, Jenna has 200,000 fucking followers on Twitch, you know what I mean? So, but I did, you know, average, like, 8K viewers, and then it went up to 20K if I was doing something special, and, you know, it fluctuated. So that's good. But yeah, my Twitch channel was still relatively new. I'd only been streaming on Twitch for like two years. Not even. Like a year and a half. I streamed on Twitch for a year and a half, I think. I mean, yeah, my YouTube followers, uh, not all of them are active, of course. Uh, Not all of my Twitch followers were also active. The engagement was obviously very high, though. The engagement on my YouTube is also very high, relatively speaking. So, I mean, 700,000, 800,000, you know, look at other channels that have 700,000. Most of the time, the engagement is very low. It's very easy to get views on Twitch when you're established name. It's true. If you can get into the into like a social circle on Twitch, you can get viewers. But you have to get into that social circle. Because hosting is a huge thing on Twitch. You know, you host other channels, they get viewers, things like that. Which is why I think if I host people on Mixer, it would really, really help to grow something there. Because the hosting system on Mixer is just as good as it is on Twitch. Whereas on YouTube, there is no hosting system, which is why I made my own website to create, you know, an artificial hosting system. Because even if the viewer... Okay, let's say I host somebody with 2,000 viewers. And an hour after the host, they go down to 300 viewers. And those are all AFK viewers. Those AFK 300 viewers will still make them high up on the category, so people can, so new people can see them and watch them. And that's, you know, the whole point of it. I'd rather go back to Twitch than Mixer again. (laughs) Well, when you don't have Twitch as an option, do what you gotta do. Do you talk to Twitch staff? I don't talk to Twitch staff on a daily basis, no. John Zerka. Well, John Zerka is uh, streaming on Twitch, so. Have you had a response to your latest Twitch ban appeal? Um, 
I'd rather just not talk about uh, my band appeal. Nothing good can come from it. But, you know, one day, people will either see that it worked out or it didn't. You know, only time will tell. Has, just, has Destiny talked to you? Not recently, not since I've met up with him that one day. somebody with 50 viewers is making 50,000 a year, and I pull like 2,000 viewers on Mixer, that's a pretty good income, you know, it's not a bad living there, so, uh, you know, 
I, I try to gauge. I, I just have to gauge it if it happens, you know. But I think there's a there's a lot of ways to make money on Mixer that YouTube just does not have. There's some ways on Mixer to make money that even Twitch doesn't have, you know. And the, you know the sparks are like pretty nice. Sounds like fake news. I don't know. I believe it because I looked at some mem I looked at some streamers on Mixer that have like a hundred viewers. Every fucking viewer in their chat is a goddamn subscriber. So, and I look at their Ember thing, and they get like they 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 all have like shitload of Embers and shitload of Sparks. And, like I definitely believe that Mixer streamers have a high engagement of like making money. I don't know what it is, but I think they I think everyone just really wants to support each other on there. I think that's what it is. Why am I still driving? Bro, we got a fucking we got five more hours left. Bro, no way. I'm telling Josh, I'm just telling you based on what my sponsor dude said. Max for 50 viewers is a few K. He told me 50,000 a year for somebody who likes 50 or 60 viewers. That's just what he told me. And I don't, I, I, I believe that. I don't not believe it. You know what I mean? Because I looked at the streamers myself. Go look at somebody with 100 viewers on Mixer. They all, they have, and it, some, go look at somebody with 100 viewers who's a partner on Mixer. They have a lot of subs. That's all I'm saying. And they have a lot of embers as well. I don't know if I'm going to stream the entire rest of the drive, but, you know, I'll stream for as long as I feel comfortable with until I start getting way tired, I guess. Because let's say this. Let's say somebody has 60 viewers every single day. You know, that's probably what? A thousand people all together that watch their streams, you know, on a weekly basis. You can make a good amount. You, you can make at least 50,000 a year from a thousand people watching your streams and supporting you. I don't disbelieve that. But, you know, like I said, we'll see. If I become partner, we'll see. I mean, right now I have just as many members as I have viewers on the stream right now. But obviously not all of the members are watching the stream right now. So I mean, you know, it's, it's very similar. Although, I had a huge influx of viewers, or a huge, huge influx of members from the $1 subs. So, but most of my members are still in the $5 range. So that's pretty good. How long do you find out if you're partnered? I don't know. It's been a week now. I really don't know how long it takes. I think when I applied for partner on Twitch, it took a couple weeks for them to reply to me. So I really don't know. Yeah, Nick, I would. So you're going to mostly stick with Mixer then? I, I, get, I don't get how you got 48k viewers on CX Factor stream and now 1k. That's a 98% decrease in our audience and I'm sure 98% of those people weren't toxic. What exactly happened to me? I mean, we're, dri it's, we're driving at 1 o'clock in the morning with member-only chat versus a huge event that I advertised for two weeks straight. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And obviously there's some other factors in there as well, but, you know, obviously I'm not going to have 48k viewers driving my car for five hours, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not complaining. Like I said, as long as I can make a living, that's all that really matters, you know what I mean? As, as long as I can pay my bills, I'll be happy streaming. The time, if the time comes where I can't pay my bills anymore, then, you know, streaming now becomes a hobby instead of a, you know, full-time job. So, 
so I don't know. What flavor of vape? Uh, this is just a this tobacco flavor. You know, they don't really sell jewel flavors anywhere except at like smoke shops. I got this, I got the jewel pot from a gas station, so they just had tobacco flavor. So it's kind of shitty, it tastes like shit, but it's whatever. What kind of job would you do if you stopped streaming? I don't really know. I'd probably just go back to school, get my master's, and you know, in business and figure it out from there. Yeah, I've also has I haven't put any highlights out on my channel in three months or four months. And highlights are is, is how I grow my channel on YouTube. So putting no highlights out for four months probably has not helped my viewership. But, you know, I'm not really concerned. It takes one highlight video to get in the algorithm, and I'm good. You know what I mean? I mean, Asian Andy went from 100 viewers to 8,000 overnight from one viral video. So... I mean, that's the good thing about YouTube, though. If you hit the algorithm on a highlight video, then you get all these new viewers. So I'm really not that concerned about it. Do you watch YouTube desktop streams? What do you mean? No one really streams desktop streams on YouTube like that. Have you thought about managing streamers? I mean, I don't know. If I had to do a job that was that that wasn't streaming, it, it probably like I don't know. I'd probably just focus on finishing uh, my degree at school and then figure it out. I mean, I already have my associates, so two years for a bachelor, another two years for a master. Probably just spend, you know, those four years in school and then figure it out. I don't know if I'd make a very good manager for a streamer, but I could definitely give streamers good advice. I definitely know how to grow a, a channel, but I don't think I'm very good at negotiating sponsors. You know, I'm too quick to take the offer that a sponsor gives. Uh, but I definitely can give good advice on how to grow a channel. If anything, if I had to do some kind of managerial thing, I'd probably do like a thing where I sell classes to becoming a streamer or something. Or selling classes to becoming a fucking online influencer that probably would be more of my forte than, than becoming a manager I think people would buy the workshops. I mean, I have the experience to show it. And there's a lot of people in the world who really want to be streamers. So I think that that would work, but obviously don't really want to do that though. I would probably take the live view to Europe if I can get the data. same passion for streaming as it a year ago. I have the same passion for streaming, yeah. I'm just trying to take a different route at the moment. You know, with uh, the content and everything. So it may look like I don't care about streaming anymore, but that's just not true. It's just people are so used to seeing me do a certain thing, and then when I change it up, it's just, you know, it's like a shock to them. I mean, if I wasn't passionate about streaming anymore, I wouldn't care about trying to grow a Mixer channel, you know? Some people were saying, oh, you fucking want to stream on Mixer so you can, 
get more viewers and go in the spotlight. Like CX in the chat. Like if I wanted to get more viewers that desperately, I wouldn't start streaming on Mixer. I would do the same content I've been doing for the past two years. <laughs> you know what I mean? People don't understand the platform. People see somebody at a thousand, two thousand viewers, and they're like, "Up, oh, fucking, he's dead, no career." But they don't understand the power of having a platform. Because if I advertise something, like some event or something, uh, and then I do it, obviously the view count's going to go up from what it normally would be. And that's the power of having a platform. Because, you know, if I tweet something, people still see my Twitter. People know who I am that follow my Twitter. And if I... To, if I tweet and advertise something that would pique their interest, then they would come watch it. Even if they don't normally watch anymore. Because I still have the platform. I think we're making a mistake by streaming on two platforms. No other streamer does. You were getting 3k viewers two weeks ago and now are getting 1k viewers on Mixer and YouTube. Not a good idea to split. I mean, like I said, I, <laughs> we're driving in a car at 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't expect myself to have thousands of viewers at the moment. So you have to take in consideration the context of what's going on. But, uh... When I, also, when I first streamed on Mixer, I switched people over from YouTube to Mixer. I did that twice. And then I would, I would, I just started going live on Mixer by itself. And, you know, 2K viewers. Or something, instead of 3K viewers. If I want to maximize my viewers on Mixer, I'd go live on YouTube first and switch over. But I prefer not to do that. Because I'm trying to see how organic Mixer is. You know, if I switch over to YouTube every single day to Mixer, I don't really know the growth of Mixer. I can't feel out my growth organically. You know what I mean? I'm just in, I'm just in, influxing my numbers by doing, you know, by doing that. So obviously a new platform, I'm trying to get the feel for the organicness of it. But, you know... Everyone is so fixated on viewer count numbers, they don't see that. I mean, I'll give you a good example. Climbing Mount Fuji was the only stream that I advertised in the past two months. And that had more viewers than all the other streams that I did for the past two months. And I only advertised it three hours beforehand. And I had, like, double the viewers that I normally would have had. So, I mean, that's pretty good. Now, if I advertised that for, like, a week straight and I had the live view with no lag issues and blah, 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 it would probably be even higher. And that, you know, that's the power of a platform. I've been streaming on Mixer. It's really hard for new streamers, so it's probably going to take a few years to take off. Well, hopefully I can help with that, uh, with the takeoff, you know, by hosting people, so. You still think you live in Japan for a bit? Maybe one day I would like to, yes. Unlimited IRL is not taking any more sponsors right now, currently Ropey. Those viewers who feel betrayed by ICE just think ICE needs to be a savvy marketer and we should wish the best for him regardless. He's not abandoning anything. Yeah, it's kind of like a... You know, it makes me feel bad when people think that I abandon a certain portion of my community. Because I really don't like to think of it that way. I, can, I understand why people would think that. Especially when I say... I don't want those kind of viewers anymore, but it's, I just, I wish the mentality was just different, I don't know, 
because I, when I think of abandonment, I think of like, you're leaving something and you're not trying to better yourself, you're just getting away from it and it's just, and, you're, and that's it. You know, I'm trying to better myself, I'm trying to better my community and make it all a healthier experience for not only the viewers, but for myself as well. You know, that's the mentality that I have. So, for all the people that feel abandoned, you know, I'm sorry, but I have to look out for myself too. Because a lot of those people did not have, you know, my interest, my best interest in mind. And, you know, the ones that do have my best interest in mind and want to see me grow and want to see something good, you know, they stick around. Because, you know, you're not really... You can't really grow past a certain point when you cultivate a toxic, you know, community. You just can't, you know? It gets very draining and you can't collab with anybody because nobody wants to fucking go near you. So... It's very hard to grow past a certain point. And, you know, I've known that for a long time. But I still went with it. Because, you know, I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm, I'm paying my bills right now. It's making money. But once the mansion failed, I was like, all right, I'm just going to, we got to change this up a little bit. I got to change this up into something that's more sustainable. Because, you know, something that I had wanted for a very long time we made it happen but then it didn't work I'm like alright we gotta change this up because you know if I work towards something and then the thing I get after I work towards it if, if it's not sustainable with what I have going on around me then what's the point of working towards it you know the mansion fell because you didn't stream though yeah, but there's reasons why I didn't stream at the mansion as much as I wanted to. I had, I had a million fucking problems at the mansion, you know? People constantly doxing, the police constantly coming over, the landlord constantly getting harassed, um, people constantly trying to get us evicted. Um, you know, there's just a million problems I had to deal with, and I had all the weight on my shoulders, you know? I had all the, all the people that, we, that I, I invited into the house was like everyone like all the weight was on me so it was really hard to stream and have all that weight on me it's either one or the other you can't run a company and be a streamer it's either one or the other but i tried to do both you know i tried to start scuffed i tried to run a company and be a streamer it just it was too much i couldn't do it obviously I didn't have the best management either so I had so that didn't really help as well <laughs> so uh, you know maybe if I had better management it would have worked out better but unfortunately that was not the case unfortunately it's also very hard to get a manager when you cultivate a toxic community you know no one wants to manage you no one wants to sponsor you nobody wants to collab with you so it's you know at that point, you get what you can take. That's why I had fucking live me as a sponsor. You know, that's why all these different things. Because why would, you know, some not scuffed Chinese company want to sponsor? But you live and you learn. You know? You live and you learn. That's what it's all about. GG Sub. GG Subs is actually a really good sponsor. They're probably my only good sponsor in the past two years. That like everybody likes. They're not scuffed. It's a good sponsor. Everything else is either was either like weed or fucking live me or fucking random fucking gambling sites, you know what I mean? So nobody wants to see that shit. But you know, I got what I could take. Or I got what I can you know, I took what I can get. stickers for them, that's good. 
Wade will never get a sponsor, but he still makes thousands of dollars at a night and doesn't even leave his room. The Ropey, you have to understand the power of sponsors, dude. <laughs> like, somebody can make thousands of dollars a day, and that seems really good. And you know, maybe they make $200,000 a year. But if they can't get sponsors, they are blue balling the fuck out of themselves. Because if they just change what they do a little bit, maybe they could make 500000 a year from sponsors, you know? I mean, I'll put it like this. Live me, paid me. I remember when it marketing class towards my finance degree. The first advice in the book was if you log or stream to never split yourself into multiple sites, it would result in a big loss lull. Yeah, but I'm also, in, I'm, in, I'm investing in Mixer, so, you know, risk versus reward type thing opportunity costs, shit like that. I think the opportunity cost of streaming on Mixer versus YouTube is worth it in the long run, if it works out. Um, like I was saying, for example, LiveMe paid me $50,000 a month to stream on their site for 30 hours a month. I was not making 50k a month in donations. So, yeah, you know, I could just make donations you know, 20, 30k a month donations, whatever. But then, if you get a sponsor, they sponsors always pay ridiculous, retarded amounts of money that donations just cannot touch. So you always want to work towards a sponsor instead of just baiting your next five dollars <laughs> for a donation. So yeah, you know, somebody like Blade could make thousands of dollars a night. But if he maybe moderates a little bit of something or changes something, maybe he could make $100,000 a month. Like, who knows? You know? But it all comes, like, with, you know, you have to scale it, you know? Like when I got banned on Twitch, a company offered me $2 million to stream exclusively on their site. I did not take that offer because I was like, all right, if I stream on YouTube, I was taking a risk, it's not guaranteed money, but if I stream on YouTube, I know I can make a following on YouTube and probably make that $2 million anyways, instead of streaming on a fucking random site, get the two mil and have no following. And you know, I did the YouTube path, and I've made almost $2 million. And I have a following, as opposed to $2 million with no following. I mean, I'm not going to say what sites look black, but... I've said it before, but there's no need to say it again. sponsorship. When I got banned on Twitch, NRG uh, dropped me. But they weren't really a sponsor, though. I don't really remember the contract, but NRG was fucking me, dude. Like, they were... I don't know. I, I, when I signed with NRG, I was obviously very naive and a new streamer, so I signed up. They, were, they wanted... Obviously, I wasn't on YouTube at the time, so that's why they made the contract like this but they wanted 40% of my YouTube revenue. So that's not a sponsor, you know? That's, a, that's not good. Energy didn't do anything for me. Why the fuck would I give them money? <laughs> the only thing Energy ever did for me was allow me to meet Shaq. Like, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, I did that stream with him. That's the only thing they did for me. But obviously, when I got banned on Twitch, that contract was now void because I had I rewrote it. But then soon after that, they dropped me anyways because I wasn't on Twitch anymore. But yeah, if I would have stayed on Twitch and made high and made highlight videos on YouTube, they would have took 40%. But you know, that's that's a that that contract doesn't really matter because if I was still on Twitch, I wouldn't really care about my YouTube revenue. You know what I mean? So that's why I signed that contract. How much money is your dip dab sponsor? Well, I'd rather I don't want to really say that how much money because then like you know other sponsors may not sponsor me because I'm telling people how much they pay me but 
let's just say that any sponsor that I've taken in the past two years has never paid me under 10000 a month. Never. In the past two years. Every sponsor I take is always more than that. And, you know, that's a pretty normal thing. And that's on the low spectrum of it as well, you know? Most streamers, they get like 20, 30k a month in, you know, from a certain sponsor. Like I said, I just took what I could get though because my community was not very sponsorable. You got money saved? I do have some money saved, yeah. Not as much as I would like, but I do have some saved at this point. When I moved to Austin, I didn't really have that much going like that much saved at all like it was very hard to move to Austin I didn't have much because I had spent forty thousand dollars for the fucking scuffed shit like I invested my own money they're not no it's not 40 I'm I'm, I'm pulling your chain but I invested some money I, mean, I invested a lot of money into scuffed and it didn't work out so obviously at that point I was not doing so well but at this point three months later you know I have money saved because Austin is mad fucking cheap it wasn't 40000 I'm pulling your chain. It was, it was less. But still, I invested a lot of the money I had saved into that. But yeah, Austin is so fucking cheap, it's very easy to save money at this, at this point. Scared money makes no money, though. It's true. If Scuffed would have worked out, it would have been great. Um, you know, I, was, I had all these different things lined up, like different little sponsors or whatever that would have paid for things here and there, but like I said, running a business and streaming at the same time, not an easy task. There are people who think of millions saved, bro, I fucking wish. So last year, I think I made... What was it? We calculated on stream. I think I made like 700000 last year. Or something. And that seems like a lot. But relatively speaking, for the numbers that I pulled last year on my streams, super low. That's like poverty That's like poverty level shit for, for a streamer pulling 10k plus viewers. You know what I mean? Most other streamers that were pulling the same viewers that I was, easily 2, two million a year easily, you know, probably more, so that goes to show how unsponsorable and, and, you know, that I was, and how hard it was to, not, I wouldn't say hard, how hard it was to make money, but I was just blue balling the fuck out of myself. If I notice one thing lately is that once you start losing a viewer base, it never goes back up again, just goes down. Ninja used to get 150k back in the day. TPU 90k now ninja at 14k, TPU 33k, etc. I disagree. When I dated Caroline, I had 2k viewers for months. I had 2,000 viewers for like 4 months when I, get, when I dated Caroline. Or something, right? Like, it was low. And then I shot the viewers back up with some good highlight videos. I mean, that's basically what it was. I had the Hampton Brandon thing on Hollywood Boulevard, made a highlight video out of that, got fucking shitload of views. Thing after that, you know, the Tinder video has like almost 4 million views on YouTube right now. That fucking helped a lot. So, you know, it goes up and down. Ninja versus TPU, that's a stupid argument because Ninja's on a whole new platform and TPU's not. <laughs> so, Ninja doesn't need to consistently pull 80k viewers a day. When Halo comes out, he's probably going to pull. 100k viewers, and then, you know, it might go down again, but he's still going to pull more viewers than what he did on Twitch at a, for a small period of time. So, viewer count doesn't really mean anything when you have a platform. Yeah, that makes sense, Joseph. comparing yourself to Ninja. I've never compared myself to Ninja. 
just for that donation set. Where am I driving? I'm just driving back home. We dropped Kimberly's cat off in Missouri, so we're driving home now. We're I think we just passed into Texas right now. So we're like uh, 100 miles from Dallas. We're like four and a half hours away from Austin. I've been missing a lot of streams working second shift and you don't have many recent streams on the channel. Anyway, I can watch them more on my just out. Hey dude, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, homie. I appreciate it. That's good. to Ninja in the context of switching platforms, there's no other good comparison. I mean, in terms of switching platforms, then perhaps, yeah. much of a naysaying vocal minority, you know, outside of Reddit, so, to be honest, sometimes they bleed into the chat, but it's not really that big of a deal. I'm not really sure, Reapers, I guess it depends on what time I get home, and what time I end falling asleep. travel and when I do stuff, I always stream pretty much every day, so, like, when we go to Europe, I'll probably stream almost every day in Europe, not every day, but, like, you know, almost every day, because I have shit to do, you know, there's not really much to do in Austin, like, we can do streams here and there, but there's not much to do there. You are supposed to stream yesterday, but then update on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like updating Twitter with bad news of, like, I'm not streaming today. It just creates a lot of negativity on my tweet, so I don't really like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wish I, could, I wish there was a way to update without cultivating a negative response. Because the fear with that is if I tweet no stream, and the next day, no stream, and then so on, it just makes everyone super angry, and I don't want to make people angry, and I really usually wouldn't care about that, but if new people see, see if, if new people come in and they see angry people, I feel like it automatically starts with them as an angry person when they watch, like the new viewer is now an angry viewer. Dislikes hurt new viewers from seeing organically. No, dislikes don't really do anything for YouTube. You can still show up in trending and stuff. I mean, not with live streaming because it doesn't show up in fucking trending, but um, dislikes don't really do anything. 
I disable the dislikes and likes on this stream though, because what I don't like is when people in the chat are like, fuck you, let me dislike this. You know, it just makes for a toxic chat. That's not a troll either, it's not a funny troll. You know, when I think of trolls, I think of something funny, it's not a funny troll, it's like toxic. Like, okay. Thank you so much for the dislike. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you enjoy living in Austin? Thank you, James, I appreciate the member. Yeah, I enjoy living in Austin. It's not really content central, but it's very nice to live in. It's a very nice city. They have a lot of nice things. Um, everything's convenient, everything's nearby. Everything is like, they have a lot of nice restaurants, a lot of nice parks, things like that. But it's not really, you know, it's not content central. It's very cheap to live, there's no state tax. The only way to have haters or no stream is to have a schedule and stick it so people know. CX in the chat. They can be more understanding. Yeah, but unfortunately, having a schedule when you're doing IRL is kind of difficult because I don't know what to do every day. And sometimes if I can't find out, if I can't figure out what to stream, I just don't stream. And then obviously, I don't know. Sticking a schedule to a tweet makes it very, like, it puts a lot of pressure on me. As an IRL streamer, you know, if I just did desktop every day, it'd be different, but I don't. I could do a schedule if I go to Europe, but... You know, I basically just stream any every single day anyways. Austin was a bad move in my opinion. Why do you say that? I don't really want to stream IRL in Austin too much. You know, I feel like, like we could do it sometimes or whatever, but I don't really want to do it too much because, I don't, you know, it's kind of like don't shit where you eat kind of thing. Like, I don't want to, let's say I do IRL and then get banned from fucking every restaurant in Austin. I don't want to get banned everywhere. Like, in LA, I was banned from all my favorite fucking restaurants because of callers and all this dumb shit. Like, I don't want to get banned from everywhere in Austin. You know? Like, don't shit where you eat. You just don't drink because there's nothing to do. And that's your job. Well, I mean, you know, I travel and do stuff like that. I also, you know, I just, Austin's a smaller town than LA, and word will get around. I don't really want to stream IRL too much in Austin, because, you know, I don't want word to get around that I'm this IRL streamer that, you know, then problems come wherever I go. Like, I don't want that to be a thing. In LA, I didn't really care, because it was a bigger city. And I just didn't had a different mentality at the time, but you know, obviously that's changed. So, although I did IRL DBZ, yeah, there were no issues. You're right. I, I definitely like I've had no issues with callers or anything for months. It has been great. But uh, I guess the other problem is there's just not much to do in Austin, you know, without exploiting people for content, which is, you know, a lot of what I did in LA. Um, besides the events, so like the ball stream, the Lamborghini stream, you know, I, normal IRL in LA, most of my streams were just like exploiting people and causing drama. And that's not really what I'm going for anymore. Yeah, IRL nowadays really isn't hard to do, um, because I have gotten rid of the toxicity that followed me, that created, you know, problems everywhere I go. And, you know, a lot of that, a lot of, uh, me being able to accomplish that is from, you know, if I have, if somebody does, like, call, I'll just fucking mute the stream, put the stream down, fucking walk away. You know, EBZ still gets fucking calls on his stream because he confronts the goddamn person who talks to them. Like, who talk, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to tell EBZ, like, don't confront the person. Just mute the stream and walk away because then the shit will go away. But if you confront the person every time they come up to you with the phone, it just encourages that behavior. Just traveling. There's been a lot.
lot of downtime when you're not traveling. Like, well, I mean, I can't travel non fucking stop. I I traveled twice this month, Canada and or last month, Canada and Japan. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know, two weeks in Canada, two weeks in Japan. It's pretty good. It's, and we're going to Europe for three weeks next month. So, I mean, there's not that much downtime, relatively speaking. It just seems like there's a lot of downtime because the internet. You know, a month is a long time on the internet. So. Like I said, I have some pretty uh, exciting things that could be coming over the next few months, so we'll just have to see where that goes. Find good people to hang around that bring good content. Yeah, but that goes back to like the exploiting people thing. It's, it's really hard to hang out with somebody because they're good content without it being exploitative. Yeah, it's cryptic on purpose, Kyle, because I don't want to promise anything that doesn't happen, you know? I just rather keep things pretty quiet, and then if something good happens, then then it happens, you know. Instead of saying something good's gonna come, and then it doesn't come, then it ends up with another situation where I promise something for a year before it happens. Some people would want to go on the crazy streamer life. Yeah, they would, but. I just have to be careful with this for all the things that we talked about earlier. I mean, like, LA has a lot of people that want to be actors, entertainers, and shit, so it's easy to find people who want to stream in LA. I don't know how easy it would be to find people in Austin who want to stream, you know what I mean? Austin has a lot more normal people than LA. I think the better move is to host people on Mixer and try to grow, you know, a network that way. So they don't have to live where I live to stream. I think that's the more balanced way to do it. Because then I'm not, it's not ending up in a situation where I'm friends with somebody solely because they're good content. You know, because that, that makes for a weird relationship. Laura wants to move to Austin. I saw she wants to breathe the same air as me. It's fucking weird. Laura is literally gonna murder me when I don't marry her. Like, when it finally gets through her mind that I don't love her and I'm not gonna marry her and she's weird, she's gonna come and she's gonna fucking murder me. So, I gotta just be careful with that.
Also, Bjorn doesn't know how to not say the N-word when he's drunk. So, I, don't, I could never stream on Mixer around Bjorn. If he gets drunk, you know? But, and people would always encourage him to get drunk, so he'll always be fucking drunk. Like, I would love if Bjorn would join me, but he has to control himself and not say the N-word in it. And ha not have his media. Like, he actually turned his media off when I was streaming with him, so it was nice. But, uh, when he gets drunk, he just doesn't control himself. And maybe, uh, you know, he could come if he doesn't get drunk, but everyone just, like, everyone encourages him to get drunk. Like, that's his, that's what he does, you know? That's, that's like part of his streams, getting drunk, so it's hard to say, just don't get drunk. Thank you, Josh, and for the member, dude. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you, dude. I watched the VOD the night you talked with Casey. It was hilarious how he peaced out and played pinball. I mean, that whole night was ridiculous. How much your rent? I mean, I, I, I'd rather not say how much my rent is because then people can find where I live, but very, very cheap compared to LA. Any advice for someone who's worried about people looking at them weird if they streamed IRL? I feel like I'd be too embarrassed to want to do it. Well, when I first started streaming IRL, I was a little embarrassed too. But once you do it one time, you just stop giving a fuck. Especially if you have viewers, you know, giving you positive reinforcement during your stream, saying that they like your content, you really stop giving a fuck. See you in the chat. You know, the viewers end up being more important than the people that you would think you're embarrassed by in public. And also, you have to realize you're never going to see people again in public. Who cares what they think? You're never going to see them again. People laugh at me all the time when I stream in public. I don't give a fuck. I'm never gonna see them again. Who cares? channel a little bit 
I guess that's my, my nearest uh, short-term goal. I like the way I fund the show. I mean, I'm always looking for sponsors, yeah. You know, to help me fund things, but that's not really anything I'm actively looking for. It just, it, 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 they, usually they just come to me, you know. Do I believe life after death? Not really. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you just dream forever, but I don't really think there's like a heaven or anything. Is the studio still going to be a thing? Yeah, it's still going to be a thing. But, you know, we're going to Europe next month, so I don't know when it's going to be a thing, but it's still going to be a thing. Mixer TOS, even worse than Twitch. I mean, as long as you're not a complete moron, you're not going to get banned. You know what I mean? Even on Twitch, as long as you're not a complete moron, you're not going to get banned. It's very hard. It's harder than you think to get banned on, on these sites. You know, what happened to me on Twitch to get banned was unfortunate, but, you know, for the most part, as long as you control your TTS and, you know, you're not saying racist things, you're not going to get fucking banned. Makes their staff talk to streamers and try to adjust behavior before they outright ban. That's what I've heard. I haven't experienced it yet, but that's what I've heard. CX in the chat. The restaurant reaction in Tokyo legit was hilarious. Which restaurant?
how much longer? Four and a half hours. Four hours. Something like that. Should have took a plane. We looked at flights. We couldn't really find anything that was cheap. Austin to St. Louis is like really specific of a flight, so all the flights are pretty expensive. And we also had our cat, and our cat doesn't like to fly. So we just, you know, we just drove. As long 
I just wish it wasn't cloudy. It was worth it, but I just wished I could have got a good view and a good photo. But instead, it was cloudy and I was freezing my ass off when I got to the top because I was all fucking wet. And then I almost got kicked in the face by a random Japanese dude who didn't want me to go inside a, a building because when it was raining. <laughs> But yeah, at least I can say that I climbed it. Definitely feel proud about that.
was saying something about collabing with Kraken on Twitch and possibly Jenna. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not really a network, that's just collaborating. That's just collaborating. I have not listened to Oliver Tree, no. I know he's like a rapper or something like that. I'm 
stuff for the area where Ricky is. Yeah, but there's no internet like outside of the fucking city. Like in the nature. I know there's a lot of nature there. What limitations? Well, for starters, he doesn't have legs. <laughs> you know, he... <laughs> it's kind of hard for him to get around. Thank you, Wild Roy. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you, dude. How's your data gonna work in the EU? Well, they have pretty good 4G, so it's not, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have too much. But, uh, you know, every time I go to the EU, the data's pretty good. Is Bull decide coming on the RV trip? Probably not. I mean, if he wants to go, that would be nice. I would like to see him go. See eggs in the chat. But everybody who goes on this, that anyone who goes on this EU trip, I would like for them to pay for their own ticket. So anyone who can do that can go. As long as, you know, as well that they meet the other requirements of not being fucking toxic. Like one person, you know, rents it and then that's that's it. from like the fourth largest city in America. <laughs> We're not in fucking Arkansas anymore. Thank you. Oh, 